recording. Okay, today we continue with our class Kitsa Shachanor. And we start with Sefer Kotitz Chaim. And um, <clears throat> this topic is um, suggesting a, uh, a Shiduch, uh, the balance. Okay. The balance, let's admit something else. Okay, so it says, um, in the light of the prohibition of speaking once a fellow, one may be reluctant <clears throat> to suggest she do marriage, um, marriage matches altogether. Others may feel that it's necessary to mention every possible shortcoming of the person so as, uh, as not to be guilty of misrepresenting the truth. So it's very interesting, right? So, one second, somebody else. Okay. So, all right. Abraham is with us. All right. <clears throat> so, so we're talking about the Shibu. So, first of all, we learned before, I don't know when, but long time ago, let's say, not uh, like a few weeks ago, right? So, <clears throat> so a person should be a very careful not to not to mislead the, the other side about the Shibu, right? the marriage. So, a, per a person might think, uh, okay, the, so let, let me tell them everything that I know. So, that's, that's also a problem, right? A few acts of chesed, kindness, can compare with that of helping building a Jewish home. So it's very important that like, people should not shy away uh, when they have an opportunity to introduce uh, a boy to a girl. So, I mean, uh, that's a uh, very big mitzvah. I mean, if you, if you have, like, if you think that they might be, might, even might, it's not our... Um, it's not our business to decide, like, if they're going to be a good couple, but at least it might. So you you might inter introduce the shiva, right? right. Mm -hmm. So what's it called? Let's say there's a problem, right? Let's say uh, there's a person who wants to get a shidduch. And uh, is it okay not to say something, right? If it has no, uh, it doesn't matter pre alacha it's not going to affect them in the future at all. Uh, like, it's not an attitude problem or anything. But let's say, I don't know, this person was a balei tshuva, and let's say they don't want someone who smoked in the past, right? So is he is he supposed to say that when he gets married or before he gets married, or he doesn't need to say it at all? It doesn't matter. About about smoking? Uh, uh, let's go uh, specific. Uh, give me a specific example. It would be easy. specific. Uh, <laughs> I I don't. Let's say he got suspended from uh, yeshiva before. Let's say. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is he okay? So she doesn't want someone who got suspended from yeshiva, but he has uh, the best attitude out of any bacher. Let's say he knows yeah, the. Yeah. And so on. So it's not going to affect at all their marriage or halacha or anything. So is he at, le at least at least at the, uh, at the at the initial stage, do not volunteer the, the information. So let them get to, to know each other, and then uh, after some some time, see, he he should mention it. Mm -hmm. I mean, after after they know, and she say, okay, he was stupid. He did whatever he did, and it was seven years ago, ten years ago. You understand? So now uh, she she would go, she would see it's a different light than uh, if he, if he comes in and say, you know what? Actually, I got thrown, thrown out from you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, you know what? <laughs> Just go home, guy. You understand? So, <clears throat> <clears throat> so many times uh, all of these things that people uh, made up uh, things for for themselves, these barriers, these guidelines and stuff like that. So they're not realistic. So in this case, in in in, 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 the, in the similar cases, you're allowed to withhold the information for some time, and but then you allow you you, you should uh, you should tell them basically. <coughs> Continue. One who thinks that a certain young man may be suitable, may be a suitable match for a certain young woman, is not responsible to investigate the two, and the family um, and their families. Before proposing a match, there is a responsibility of the party involved in uh, and their parents. So ba basically, you know that she's uh, she's this age and he's this age, and they have something in common. So you your business is just to introduce. You you don't have to go like a dick about his friends and this and that. That's your business. That's a uh, business of your friends, right? Your 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 mother basically mm -hmm. to find out all these things. So let's say. Uh his brother, right, the person who wants to get a shidduch. His brother went to this yeshiva, 
who uh, that family doesn't want to marry anyone whose brother or him or his family ever went to that yeshiva. So does he have to say that information ever? Or does, does not he not not right, right, right away because as, as you and I understand it's stupidity to begin with, mm -hmm. right? There are people from uh, from the best yeshiva they act like animals, right? And then uh, people from unknown yeshiva that uh, the greatest of the great. You understand? So there, there, there's no connection, and it's it's known fact. People they uh, they go in. Um, I have uh, somebody in uh, Lake Putishiva. So they they told me that uh, they, they introduced. I don't know when was it. Like I don't know three five years ago when 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 Raboim they uh, Rabbeim, they, they they understood what's going on. People getting uh, accepted to Yeshiva in order to start to find the shido. Period. So that they would go there for three months, six months. Uh, on on a resume, it's, uh, they, they, they have this uh, this uh, Lake Putishiva, right? The, the, the main one, and uh, that, that's it. So they, they actually forbade uh, the, the date. So to date for a first, I don't know, six months, one year, whatever. So to to, to show that they're serious. But uh, people are using these names of Yeshiva is, uh, is I mean uh, is everything on on a resume like uh, college, they have the they would use. You understand? So there are crooks everywhere. <clears throat> However, the prohibition against misleading one's fellow requires one to su uh, not to suggest shiduk unless. Okay, so of course there is like, uh, you, you cannot be careless as well, right? Unless, number one, <clears throat> he believes that given, uh, that given what he knows uh, of their personality, the two could be a good match. And he is unaware of any reason that relationships should uh, cause pain uh, or to either one. So I mean, not normal people, if if he, uh, he he does not know that this guy is a drug user and she's an abusive person, right? Uh, it goes for to, to men and women. It's not in today's age. It's not only men that are abusive. Uh, women also very abusive, right? So if he does not know any of this, I mean, uh, that's uh, that's a good shido. <clears throat> Number two. Um, in his opinion, there is a reason to believe that their meeting will ultimately result in engagement. Okay, so I mean, uh, I mean, she, she's single, he's single. Why not, right? So I mean, uh, in his mind, there is no like uh, big like barriers and uh, I don't know some like uh, unless guys said, you know what, I'm I'm not uh, planning on uh, on meeting somebody for the next eight months. So that's. Uh, Definitely wrong, but if he's looking, she's looking, there is no problem. It is wrong to waste a person's time, energy, and emotions. Basically, if, if, if he knows that one side is not ready. So it's not, uh, it's not fair for, to the other side, right? That, that he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking, right? Uh, even though he's not serious about uh, getting married, she's not serious. Number three, um, he's not aware of any medical emotional or um, character deficiency that would render one party unfit to marriage, right? So all of this medical, emotional, that uh, people getting excited and this and that, I mean, uh, all of these medical terms that I do not even know how to pronounce, Baruch Hashem, but they, they, they exist, they're like crazy people. So I, I, I talk to, I try to help somebody, and person is, is talking normally, and then start yelling and screaming from nowhere, from nowhere. I insulted me and stuff like that, and of course he he called and and, uh, and apologized, and it's not me and this and that, and it's medication. Whoa! So you know, so I I would stay away from such a person. Um, four nine, continue. One second. Four nine thirteen. Okay, continue. Number four. One does not feel <clears throat> that the either party will have a um, negative influence upon each other. Okay, of course, uh, we, 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 as we said, you, you don't have to do like a thorough investigation, but uh, if, if you don't feel like, uh, I don't know, some, like uh, she's too bossy, she wants to be a boss, right? She wants to dominate this poor guy. <laughs> so that's, that's not good shit, right? Number five, he's not aware of one party lacks something, that the other is um, insisting upon or has something that uh, which other party ex uh, explicitly expressed strong objection. Should any of the, so that, that's what uh, 
what we said, the, what uh, what David was asking. If they say if from this is Shiva, no way, right? So if uh, if you know that the people are, are like uh, like that, so maybe you, you should not uh, su suggest the Shiva. If they like the very strong, but if they not so strong and the gender is a preference, so we can go and try to like uh, play down for some time. Even though we, we, we have to tell this guy, of course. <clears throat> Uh, should there be a doubt as to whether any of these conditions have been met, the council of Talmud Chacham should be sought. Okay, of course, uh, as always. Rabbi, so when all is said and done, what's the better ma'alach to do a shidduch? Like the chasida should do it, where usually the parents choose and then end the story. You know, they go on two, three dates, or the litfish who can go for, let's say, three months. Which one? Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a one... When, whenever they feel comfortable, you understand? So, Hasidic uh, way is, is one way. So, they, they like, um, Hasidic um, way, you see, it's, they, they, they're the more stern. It's like a more, more settled mind, I, I would say. So, they, they know that they have to have family. They, they, she's a good family. She's good looking. It's, it's, you, you have to understand for, for, most of the guys, it's it's the first girl that, that, that she uh, he, he actually sees in his life, except be, beside his sisters. You understand? And this sister may be smoking a few times in in in, this, uh, in, 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 uh, in the childhood, so she, she he doesn't see her as a, as a woman. He, he sees her as abusive power. You understand? So now it's it's a first girl. So of course he's going to say, well, what is he's going to say? No. But 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 for Litvish, for a more modern, let's say, like no, not modern, modern, forget about, uh, more like um, like um, Haredi. So they 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 want to know each other more and stuff like that. The more room to play like this way or that way. So of course, um, I mean, uh, whatever, whenever they feel comfortable. But but it, it should be like a, it it should be like point when they, they say okay, you say one month, okay, one month. You have. Two months, to, okay, three months, but that's it. You understand? So if yeah, after after some time, it's it just ruin the the relationship. It's not going to work. Almost guaranteed. Okay. So let's um, <coughs> try to continue with the kids, sir. And we are <coughs> sorry on the Simon uh, twenty four. Laws of the Sefer Torah found um, found to have an error. Okay, that's that's what we um, discussed. Okay, and then uh, uh, Sif two number two. Okay, Simon twenty four. Sif number two. <clears throat> okay, and it says, if word was found divided, so that it looks like two words, or if two words were written close together, and they look like one word. A child, um, as described below in CF number five. Okay, so um, the kids will explain the child is qualified to make this assessment. Okay, so ba basically, before we continue, so I remember what Shulchanor says. So Shulchanor says, uh, <laughs> this beautiful phrase, the, the, uh, the child who is not uh, very smart and not very uh, childish, not, not very dumb, basically, right? So he, he knows how to read, right? But he does not know, the, but he's not so advanced that he knows the, the, the words basically. So, but, but, but he knows the letters, right? So, so we give him and see how he's going to read. As a one word or two words, basically. That's, uh, of course, we're not telling him what, what to do. We just ask him uh, for, for a help, this little guy, right? <coughs> so so we, we always take this child. So, Meaning not, not too smart, not too dumb, but he knows the letters. Or if an extra word is found. So, so basically, we, we, we pass in based on, not, not on a big rabbi, right? but based on opinion of this little guy. So he's, uh, he's our rabbi in this case. Right? So how does it look to him? Two words or one word? Okay. If an extra word is found, regardless of whether it is an extraneous word, which has no place here at all, or um, whether a word uh, was mistakenly written twice. Mm -hmm. The case of the case, uh, cases has second edition, okay, okay. Or similarly, 
so okay so i apologize for this uh, parenthesis well <clears throat> so ba basically he, he's saying if uh, two words are one word or there is a um um extraneous word should not be there or one word uh, was written twice or similarly if a deviation is uh, discovered in the arranging of the passage of the safer torah such an open space in the place of the closed space right so we we said last time was it was the difference so one is the uh, <clears throat> uh, closed space when when uh, there, there is a sentence ends right and there are spaces so so many spaces and then uh, on in the same line uh, that the next um the next sentence starts, right? And uh, and uh, open is uh, opposite when uh, when it's like uh, they have spaces until the end of the line, and uh, the the next line starts with uh, with the with next sentence, basically. Okay. Okay. So so basically, um, this uh, close sent uh, close uh, space and open space are like in in, in the wrong places right not not the way it's supposed to be or a break of the passage where it is unwarranted so meaning in the middle of the sentence they decided to break there is a, the break where there is, should not be a break at all there is, should not, no, not, not even space but they do it did a break right or if there is a place where the passage should be interrupted and it is not <clears throat> so Basically, uh, so sentence ends, ended, and they they continue with uh, uh, with with the next word, and there are no no spaces. Coming to there is no break where there is, should be spacing for either the open or close close the passage. So basically, as, as we said, after a passage ends, it should be it should be close or open. I Meaning uh, close, as we said, sentence like. Uh, uh, ends spaces so, so like uh, some amount of spaces and then start next sentence or it starts from from the next line but here it just uh, one sentence uh, runs after the other right all these um, <clears throat> absolute invalidations and we are required to take another safer term so all of these things that we just mentioned um um except um except the the first case would be say it's one word or two words so that there will be shown to the child but the, the rest of this extra word or uh <clears throat> or uh, the, the, there is no uh, wrong spaces uh, wrong spaces in the right in, in, in the wrong uh, places right so you need another safer tool <clears throat> cf number three if it was discovered that a letter was touching another letter, uh, if uh, if it seems that they become connected after it was written, the safer Torah is kosher, provided that the letters have uh, not changed form. Okay, so let's stop here and try to explain what, what it says. So next, uh, <clears throat> so so we know be, be, between all of this letter between all of the letters should be space always how big is a different uh, thing so of course there is a minimal amount that uh, that you you actually see like uh, I don't know maybe the the hair breath, breath or something like but it should be spaces right <clears throat> so now they're touching so for sure there is no doubt you can see with your naked eye that uh, that the two letters are touching. So, one more time, this coming to us. If it was discovered that the letter was touching another letter, if it seemed that they become connected after they was written, comment here. For instance, it was connected. Uh, it was um, if what connects the letter, there is a drop of ink, clearly fell um, then after they were they were written. So of course, uh, is uh, this, this ink, right? It is uh, it's not it's not it's not so easy to be very precise. So especially when the letter letters are a little closer to each other, so a little drop, a tiny drop of ink, can can, can connect the two words. So of course, it was not intentional. 
it was not how it was written basically um, um, so in this case continue what do we do after the uh, after uh, the safer Torah is caution so basically after the fact so we, it looks like this that was uh, that connects to two letters was um, after the letters was written so after the fact the Torah is kosher commentary uh, fit for use certainly the safer Torah should be corrected before it is taken out again but um, as it was already taken out for use one is not required to take another safer Torah Sishol Hanaruch Simishna Brura which said that safer Torah is invalid in many cases but the letter, letters touched depending on the extent of the uh, contact. See Mishnah Rura 143. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, um, so first one, right? So, uh, so even, even if we go by linear opinion and we say, okay, no problem, after the fact, it is, uh, it is okay. If the second time we cannot take the same safer Torah. So we have to uh, take a razor, right? And uh, just uh, sc uh, scrape away some ink, right? To, to make, uh, to make the, the safer Torah caution. So Mishnah Brura says in, some, in many instances, in many cases, so it depends how it touched. But, but in this case, in the case of the, the kids or gifts, so it's like some that, it was uh, for sure after, after the letters was read, were written, okay. <clears throat> And continue, so, provide, so the, after the fact, provided the letters have not changed form. So I'm meaning uh, the exactly recognizable letters and look exactly the way they're supposed to be, right? If the letter remain uh, in its form despite being connected to one, uh, to another letter, the safer Torah is caution and does not have to be replaced, right? So, but uh, if they are not, so if this little dot, uh, this little dot of ink, change the, the form of the letter, so that's, uh, that's already a problem. And not, not only the, the, the letters are connected, but the, the, the problem is with, uh, with the wrong letter to be, uh, is written there. That's, that's the issue. Or, or wrong form of the letter. However, if it seems that it became connected so, at the time of the writing, that the law depends on the exact situation. Meaning when uh, it, it's not like accident, the little drop of ink fell after the the the, what is it, the, the letters was it uh, written? No, if it was initially written like that, okay. For if it became connected in this way before the letter was completed, right? Such as in the case of um, a straight a straight norm, right? Uh, we're going to explain straight norm that was connected uh, uh, within its body to the protruding foot of the adjacent tough okay and the like the safer Torah is unfit to use okay so let's uh, <clears throat> so let's see so we, we, we're dealing with, uh, with the situation when, um, when in, in the beginning, it, it was written in the wrong way. Okay, so one more time and we see the commentary. For if it became connected in this way, before the letter was completed, right? Such as the case of straight noon, noon commentary, um, in the distinction from, uh, from the noon that is located within the word, the noon located at the end of the word, extend downwards uh, without um, bending in, a, uh, in its base. So the, the, the final noon is, is one like uh, long, it has a long leg. Okay, so you, you cannot uh, mistake it for with anything, right? So one more time, before the, the letter was completed, such as the case of straight noon, so final noon, final, not, not, not the regular final noon. Mm -hmm final noon that was connected within the body okay to the protruding foot of adjacent tough of adjacent tough 
and the like. Okay, so let's see what about this tough. The tough protrudes uh, at the bottom, toward the left. Tough protrudes to the bottom, to, to the left, okay. Um, if that protrusion makes contact with another letter, the contact will, uh, will likely have been, uh, been made at the time of the second letter was written. As the Hebrew is written from, uh, from right to left. Okay. Since the straight moon must extend beneath uh, the line on which the letter, um, letters uh, are written, uh, if, it is, um, if it is touched by the protruding leg of a tough, the point of the contact will be within the body of the moon. Exactly. Thus, yeah, there, will, um, there will never be a time during which it would have been kosher letter. For, uh, in, for in, it touched the tough before it was, um, it, it was the um, requ uh, of, um, requisite length. This is absolute invalidation and another safer Torah must be taken out. So basically, since we like, uh, like we, we write from right uh, to left, right, and this uh, tough, and then uh, and then after the tough comes moon, this is protruding leg. So basically, it was not possible to read in, uh, as otherwise. Basically, I mean, uh, I don't want to like overburden you with details, but uh, <clears throat> but in, in like in the, this is like classic example where when, when you see it was not possible that it was uh, like a drop uh, fell after that, and uh, that that's how this uh, the, this letter letters were connected. It's impossible. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So, so bottom line, when we have let's say uh, two letters, right? And uh, I, I think that's what they're saying is that it's possible why since the nun, right? Uh, it wasn't full, it wasn't a complete letter, it became puzzle before it became a complete letter. <coughs> if it was puzzle, if, if they became connected, right? After you wrote the whole letter, then it's a kosher saver Torah, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I mean, um, uh, okay, in, in a simple terms, yes. That, that's what it is. So if it's possible, so in, 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 in some cases, as, as you give example, so in, in some cases, it is possible to uh, for us to assume, right, that it was uh, written in in correct manner and something happened after that. But if it's not possible, like uh, if 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 you see you 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 write first uh, from, from right to left and you wrote this leg and it's and then connected to that, so it, it's impossible to be otherwise. So that then we go stricter, yeah. I mean, uh, he, he goes with all of his details, but okay. But uh, that's that's the basic uh, meaning of it, correct. However, during the week, uh, one may scrape there to separate the two letters. So, I mean, while, while they, um, they're reading, he, they can stop for one second. He, take, he can take a razor. I mean, uh, the person who knows what to do, and just scrape a little this extra ink. That's it. That, that's, uh, that, that's all that is required. Uh, so... I, I had a problem with this. We don't say in this case, because usually when we have a problem on a Sefer Torah, don't we have to like erase the, not erase, I don't know, we have to get rid of all the other words that we had. Uh, no, 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 not, not in the Sefer Torah. You're talking about Filim or Mizuza. Uh-huh, uh -huh. That they have to be written. Uh, uh, of course, we, we, we long kids, they, they, they skip many, many things, right? So uh, uh, in, uh, in Mizuza. And filin must be written in a, in an order. So basically, if if he figure out, so just just quickly, right? So if he figured that, oh wow, 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 I did a mistake. So he has to scrape all the way from 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 the back, right? And until the mistake, fix mistake, and then continue writing. So it must be uh, in a, uh, written in a in a, in a correct uh, sequence. But if it was Hashem's name, that's it. I mean, he cannot uh, erase Hashem name to to uh, um, to fix mi mistakes that was before that. So in this case, he must burn it. But over here, uh, we we don't say that you're allowed to let's say change Barashas, even though you finished the whole Sefer Torah. Yeah, 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 yes, you 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 allow, and that's uh, that's why you have this all of these uh, sheets, right? That that uh, they, they saw with, with the seniors, right? Uh, and you can uh, you can work on them independently. 
you understand you 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 could uh, prepare for example a half of the book uh, from from five years ago and then you sort them together and uh, there is no problem and in any sequence there is no problem right but uh, but with uh, with mezuzas and uh, and um, and and to that there is a big deal and uh, this big deal so basically for us we, we must understand. There, there is no way for us to, to, to see with what was written in correct order or not in correct order. There is no way. So that's why when, when you buy mezuzah, when you buy tefillin, you, you must buy from a uh, from, uh, God-fearing person. There is no, no way to check. No way. No way. You understand? That's the issue. So here that they say if it's a weekday, so take a little and take a razor and uh, just erase a little link. And that's it. Commentary by scraping away, scrape right, uh, scrape away the ink that connects the two letters. He removes the invalidations. Period. Right. Since each letter is properly spaced, the safer Torah is fit to use. This can be done at the time of the invalidation is discovered. They can then proceed to the safer Torah is now one. Okay. So I mean, uh, the person is, is know what, what what he's doing, and I saw it once uh, in Israel. They done it. I mean, um, I mean, some. I, I asked somebody what's what, what is going on, and then and they, they, the guy explained it. But they, they it took them I don't know two minutes, three minutes max to fix this issue. Unbelievable, very fast, very efficient. <laughs> okay, continue. But if the letters became connected at the end of the letter, okay, at the end of the letter. The safer uh, Torah can be deemed kosher, and there is no need to take out another safer Torah. Okay, so let's see. So, meaning at the end of the letter. <clears throat> so, let's see the commentary. But if the letters became connected at the uh, end of the letter, commentary, um, if a waf, so waf, you know, like, um, like a straight line, almost like a little, right? Um, uh, if wa followed the taf, wa, so, so it's for the first taf, then wa, okay, and they became connected, uh -huh, as described above, the connection was formed after the, uh, the, the there already was a complete wa, okay, and the wa was of the requisite lens before it touched the taf. This is not considered absolute invalidation, and one may continue reading from the safer tone. So basically, in this case, we know that uh, one letter, it was the last letter of, of the line. So we know that uh, uh, most likely, when I say no, like, of course, uh, we have to understand it's most likely they were written correctly, and they got attached uh, later on. So we can continue use the safer tone. Although kids are use the firm's kosher, he does not mean to imply that it may be left as it is. Certainly the scroll must be corrected. <clears throat> as Kitzer con con concludes, uh, they are not required to take uh, out another, uh, another scroll. It is, um, it is kosher in respect that uh, no, um, no absolute invalidation. Okay, see Mishnah Bro. So basically one more time, even though we say it is correct, like uh, you, you can continue reading, you're going to have to take another safer Torah, but we must know that what? It's only correct for now, but uh, second time, I'm, I'm not sure if they would allow to, to use the second time. I mean, same, uh, same error. <clears throat> okay. Continue. CF number four. If a letter in the safer Torah was found to have a lost or uh, its proper form, also possible, regardless of whether it was so from the onset, of the writing, or it became so afterwards as a result of the puncture, also, right? The safer Torah is involved. So let's see the commentary and we're going to explain. If a hole uh, in the parchment took uh, part of the letter, causing loose, uh, lo loose form. So, I mean, it's uh, it's very easy. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure that if some, somebody took a needle or like, uh, I don't know, like even insects, or over the eight little uh, from the letter. So, and, and now it is a hole in, in, in a safer Torah. So now this, uh, the, the uh, form of the letter is before. 
That's it. Cannot use it. <coughs> or uh, let's say uh, if it was uh, written like this at the beginning. So it is involved. However, if the puncture was found within the area of the ladder or immediately on the outside of the ladder, so the ladder remains, uh, uh, retains its form, except that it is uh, not surrounded by parchment, and it is obvious that the puncture occurred after the writing was completed, the safer Torah is kosher, since at the time of the writing, the letter was surrounded by the parchment. <clears throat> so let's see the commentary, and we're going to explain number 24. All letters in safer Torah must be fully surrounded by the parchment on both uh, their outer and inner uh, perimeters. If there is a letter was written, uh, it was fully surrounded by the parchment. Even if the hole developed around the letter, the safer Torah is kosher provided that the form of the letter itself is not compromised. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try to, to explain what it, um, what it says here. <clears throat> so if it was a, a hole, a puncture is a hole, let's say it's in the middle of the letter, in the middle of the letter, so that does not, uh, does not touch ink, right? So, which is possible. Or it is outside of the letter and it uh, does not, also does not touch, uh, touch ink or change the, the, the thing, right? So <clears throat> why, why, why do we concern with all of this? Because we know there is a rule that um, parchment, like empty parchment must surround every letter, like inside and outside. <clears throat> so, but in this case, since it was, this hole was developed after the fact, so we say, okay, after the fact, the safer Torah is caution. And it's possible what they do, they glue piece of parchment like from, uh, from the bottom. And um, that's how they fix. I mean, if, if it's, I, I would say, I saw it a few times, when, when the hole may be a little bigger. Or they 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 was trying they were trying to erase and uh, they made the hole so and they like uh, put a piece of parchment from uh, from the bottom. <coughs> so so one more time since the time of the writing, the letter was surrounded by the parchment. So like uh, initially it was good. So after the fact, we don't drive everybody crazy. Commentary uh, where it isn't clear uh, when the puncture occurred. Unless it is a very small hole, it can be assumed that it was after the writing. Had it been there at the time of the writing, the scribe would certainly notice it. So basically, yes, we rely on this uh, on, 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 on a scribe to be a kosher person. And uh, so basically, if it was a hole, so first of all, he could uh, could have arranged the uh, the lines. Right? That's that's my guess, right? Um, I mean, uh, one of the possible solutions. He would arrange uh, the lines, so this hole would be like uh, between the lines, like not, not even close to the letters, not, not, no, no question about it, right? Or he could have, as we said, he could have fixed it. So since it was not done, so and we assume that he was a kosher person, so I assume that this hole was developed uh, after that, after the, the, the letters were written. Continue. <clears throat> if the ink uh, f uh, flaked off uh, of a letter and it is not properly black, see the safer um, the, the safer Torah is involved. So let's see commentary. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, uh, ink, right? There's uh, it's like, uh, what was it? It's like, like a paint, right? And paint has its own thickness and everything, right? So it could be like uh, part of the letter stayed the same and part of the letter, like uh, this ink fell off. Possible, right? So, I mean, you, you see the shape of the letter is, is the same, but since the ink is missing, like uh, partially, so the safer Torah is involved. <clears throat> I, I, I saw it in... Um, uh, in one shoe, we had very, very old, not, not I'm not sure how, very, very old, uh, blah, 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 but uh, old safer Torah. It looks like not a very good quality. Maybe something happened, I'm not sure. But uh, I mean, uh, during, during the years, maybe 50 years uh, scroll, maybe 60, I don't know, but not more than that. 
but something developed and uh, the, this uh, this pain this ink started like uh, um, like um, flaking off basically that's the problem uh, is that why we don't have many specific Torah from, uh, you know, let's say 500 years ago, 600 years ago? Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's very it's very hard to, to, to maintain them. So you have to like scroll and uh, like and any time this piece of ink can fall off, fall off. Yeah, yeah. It's it, I mean uh, b b because of the age. You understand? And 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 it was actually written like that. It, it was uh, it was intention that the ink. Should be like uh, it should not be like permanent, like um, like like I don't know, <laughs> like a tattoo, right? That, that uh, it like uh, penetrates the, the scroll. No, why it should be like uh, why why is that? Uh, I'm not I'm, I don't I don't I don't remember why why they say that, but uh, that's that's the requirement. So this ink should not be too strong that it would eat through the parchment. That's the thing. So okay. So that's okay. So continue. Let's uh, try to do one more. I mean, uh, the, these uh, things are very technical, but uh, <clears throat> uh, as uh, as I remember learning this, it's uh, maybe 10 percent what Shulchan Aruch is. Maybe I don't know six percent. <laughs> so that's uh, <clears throat> they give us big discount here. Continue number five. If there is uncertainty regarding the letter, that perhaps it was uh, not. Uh, it, it has not retained its form. It is sh it's be shown to a child who is neither, uh, neither usually bright nor simple. Okay, exactly. So we, we find this kid uh, who knows the letters but do not know how to read yet. Right? That is to say that he will uh, not recognize uh, what letter should be uh, from, from, from the context. Right? So he does not know the words. So he would not know, oh, no, no, this is the, this word or that word, right? Uh, but he uh, does know, uh, does now how to recognize the letters. So the letters he knows, but the words he does not know. So you, you have to find this uh, this kind of child. Because if he can, uh, <clears throat> like uh, even, even for us, right? Uh, so for you, for example, you you have a safer, right? You have a book and, and, and the corner is missing, right? The corner is missed completely. So basically, of course, you're in, so, so sometimes the whole word is missing, but when you read it, you, you, you have uh, like two, one, two letters, so you can figure out what the word is. So that's, that's not good. In this case, uh, the child must know, know only how to read the, the letters, not the words. If he, um, if he reads it properly, so we, we ask this guy, he reads it properly, the safer Torah is kosher. So of course, as we say, kosher until we fix it, right? And if he cannot read it properly, um, <clears throat> it isn't fit for use. So re basically we rely on this, I don't know, like four years, five years old guy. Um, in several, uh, uh, if several children were, uh, were divided in their opinions, mm -hmm. we follow the majority with David Ennis. Very interesting. So commentary, the number of the children were asked to identify the letter, and there is no con con <laughs> consensus among them. So of course you call them <laughs> separately to the to the safer Torah, and uh, one say this letter it was, another say it's that letter. So basically they have different opinions. So we go by majority. It's very interesting. Okay, continue. However, <clears throat> if it is only when uh, they are in doubt that the child's uh, judgment helps. Just one second. However, it is only when we end up, I'm sorry, when we end up, I apologize, that the child judgment helps. I mean, if we know that uh, it does not look the, like uh, the proper letter, that there is no, no, no child uh, help needed. Right? As, uh, as then it is being used only to reveal the facts. Commenter. If the letter is there and the child is simply confirming that it is recognizable, then he may be rely upon. Um, when uh, what is written is not letter at all, however, a child may not be relied upon. So, I mean, uh, first, um, we, we have to look and we have to see as a doubt. Maybe it looks like this letter. I mean, of course, we, we saw many shapes of the letter. So for us, I mean, of course, we, we're going to we, we know what, what is there. 
right? If, if it looks like this letter, but we're not sure, we ask child. If it does not look like a letter, we don't ask this child. <clears throat> However, if we see that the letter does not conform with, uh, to, to its halachic specification, and, sim and similarly, if the um, Yudim or Aleph, right? Or Yudim and Ayin and Shin or the lack of the Taf are separated and the like, the Sefer Torah is involved. Even though the child can read it, can, can read it, for we see that, uh, we see with our own eyes, that the letters were not properly written. So, okay, so let's uh, read this piece again, this commentary. Of course, there are many commentaries, so one second. However, if we see that the letters does, uh, letter does not confirm this halachic specification, the letters of the Sefer must be written according to specific halachic instructions. So it's a specific shape, uh, specific leg, and... Uh, how long and um, these proportions. So it's very interesting how to write these letters, right? So, <clears throat> uh, so if it's uh, that does not confirm with halachic specifications, so of course it's not valid. If you deem of the aleph, so uh, aleph has two yuds, right? Well, one from uh, from the top and from one from the bottom, basically, right? They must touch the body. This uh, aleph, uh, this yud. <clears throat> commentary. The Aleph um, is um, comprised of a diagonal bar, right? Diagonal bar and two youths from from the right and from uh, from um, from where is it from uh, from the bottom, right? Um, and two youth shapes protrusion, one above and one inverted uh, below the bar. So you have bar. One youth and then and another youth, basically. Right? That's that's how Aleph is written. <clears throat> These youths must touch the diagonal bar. So that, that's a, a obligation. If it does not touch, it's like it's it's not Aleph, it's uh, whatever bar and two youths or one youth. Right? If they do not, even if the character is recognized uh, by a child as Aleph, the safer Torah is involved. I mean that's that's very clear. Right, so, and, um, um, okay, so it's, uh, the, we, we just discussed uh, two youths in Alf. So next example, or Yudin in Ayn. So Ayn also, right? Um, it, it also has this, uh, this um, uh, um, Yud. And the Shin. So Shin also, it's uh, three Yuds, I think. Uh, like the Aleph, the Ayn, and Shin, uh, each comprise of the body uh, to which the Yuds are attached. So in uh, Ayn, it's, uh, I think it's one Yud, and in, um, in Shin, it's three Yuds. Where as well, the Yudim must be connected to the body of the Lamb. So that's, uh, I mean, uh, even though it's like, it's, it's very, very thin connection, and you see that those are Yuds, but uh, but still, uh, they, they must connect to the body, so to, to comprise one there. Okay. The Sefer Torah is invalid, so if they're not connected, even though the child can read it, I mean, uh, they, they're very, like, very, very close, but still they're not connected. So we see with our own eyes that the letters are not properly written. So we don't ask this uh, child again. Okay, so let's see. So let's see, maybe we do one more. <clears throat> Unless you have many questions. Uh, okay, so let's do one more. Or six. One, one second, one second. Oh, let me see. How much is it? Oh, you know, okay, actually, we can stop here. No, it's too much. So let's, uh, let's go to questions. So the topic. Israel, go ahead. I think you have questions. So, uh, yes. Um have uh, three questions here. Uh, is it forbidden to have in your, your refrigerator non-kosher meat? That is the first question. No, there, there is a, there is no problem whatsoever. So if you know if you know that yeah you're not you're not going to eat it, there is a, there is no problem. So 
the, the, the concern about you basically. So I give you one, one example, right? So when I used to work in the office, so we had this huge refrigerator, I mean, regular, like regular refrigerator, but 20, 30, 50 people would have their lunches in that, uh, in that refrigerator. So I would have like my, my container, whatever I have, and I have a one bag and another bag, like uh, whatever colors, so no, everybody knows that it's not his. So, and uh, there is no problem. So we, you can uh, store. And of course, uh, mo most of the food, not like I would say, yeah, most of the food was not kosher. And uh, there is no problem. It's not touching. There is no problem whatsoever. I think to this question, if this non-kosher meal from another person is leaking, uh some something uh mm -hmm. that it would, would be an issue there so i mean if, if it's leaking and it's uh, leaking on a shelf and you can wipe uh, the, the, the shelf after that so for, first of all so, so we have to understand it is a uh, cold you understand so cold already changing everything so basically uh if it does not leak on, on your food that it penetrates into your food there is no problem basically you understand? Uh, so you, if you can wipe out and throw throw uh, whatever this uh, bounty, or whatever, there is no problem. Yeah, uh, but in this situation, uh, it's very likely to the uh, leak uh, will touch uh, your food that this is reserved. Uh, would be an issue there. So, so, you, uh, so if it's uh, so if it leaks, for example, if it leaks, uh, it, it has a piece of meat, right? It's so open in a bag, it was hole in the bag, whatever. And, and you have container with your food. Whatever, you have container, but it's closed, right? So if it leak on your lid, right on top, so you can just wipe out, throw, like wash it, and there is no problem. You don't eat from that part. I mean, okay. it's, it's, it's not the, the best scenario in life to have, but basically there is not, not a big deal to kosher your uh, lid, for example. Uh, but assuming that you have uh, the... Uh, below you have a salad ready to to eat and no, 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 but that, that's that, that, that's a different issue of course that will be so, mm -hmm. what will be the the issue would be very serious so okay <clears throat> so i would i would say so if 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 you know that it's leaked there so you can you can see actually that there's uh, meat juice uh, into the in, into your salad that's one thing Right. So, but if it's a possibility, just possibility that it leaks, you you don't actually see anything, right? So that that's a different thing. So if if it's only possibility, and and you check thoroughly, and then you don't you don't see any residue, nothing, right? So you can assume uh, you can uh, even if it dropped, let's say possible, right? So you can uh, account on um, one to sixty ratio. So if it's uh, kosher ratio so of course we there's a possibility right so it's uh, 60 times of permitted ratio so there is no problem right but if you found like specifically like some drops so you can always like take take them off right with a napkin or something like if you see like uh, some like throughout some salad and uh, and that's it but the rest you can eat oh, okay because but it, it would be a uh... You you see a capital sentence in time of no, 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 not in this case, no. Okay, uh, another question is, is it forbidden for a non-Jew to handle and sell kosher meat? If he has kosher meat, what is the problem, you think? Why, why, why would you ask? Is it allowed a non-Jew to handle this kosher meat and, and make a business with, with it? With a, with a kosher meat, so if uh, so, the, the question is well, let me understand the question. So, a non Jew wants to open a, a kosher uh, kosher restaurant, let's say, uh, not really, more like uh, to deliver, deliver meat, uh, for consumers. The, you see, the, the deliver meat is uh, is uh, I would say is uh, questionable, but uh, I mean, as, as a business. If, okay, so if, if he has a trucking company, right? He has a big truck with a refrigerator and stuff like that. And he, he delivers for all of the non-kosher non butchers. So he can deliver for a kosher butcher. What is the problem? Right? So, I mean, uh, of course, all of the boxes must be sealed properly. But uh, 
we trust him that he's not going to, I mean, if, if for, for example, I, I order uh, 10 boxes, right? From, from, uh, from, uh, from the butcher. So he sent me to with this non-Jewish delivery guy, 10 boxes. So I'm not, uh, and they all sealed with the original seal. So I, I don't, I don't assume that this non-Jew would do something. To it. So uh, for uh, regarding to this, I have the final third question is, are non-Jews allowed to, to eat kosher meat? Why, 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 why not? Let, let them eat the kosher meat. What is the problem? Okay. Um, and well, I mean, uh, good, uh, <laughs> good for our business. No, <laughs> let, let let them in. I mean, uh, for for them, uh, uh, mm, I mean, I I, I saw this uh, many times. I have this butcher store not not uh, not uh, far from uh, from where I live, and and I saw like clearly Christians, like black ladies, they would come. And do the big shopping, and they will shopping with this guy for 50 years. They, they know his father, his mother, everybody. You understand? So, I mean, for them, it's a spiritual thing. You know, you understand? They don't, they don't buy, like, I don't know, in, uh, a lot. But they, they buy a little, whatever they buy, chicken, uh, piece of uh, piece of meat, and they, they do it. They, like, many, like, um, and, and I saw that they p pick it up, they, these two ladies that I uh, was in line. So they, they like, have, like, 15 packages for other, like maybe from their church or whatever thing. They like uh, kosher meat. They, of course, they, they, they say, they, I, uh, I heard many testimonies from uh, non-Jews when they first uh, try, try kosher meat. They say, it's, uh, it's, you, you do not understand what you're eating. That's what they told me, chicken. Forget about other things, chicken, right? It's like uh, from uh, the earth and the heaven. That, that's what they told me few times, maybe five times in my life. Okay. okay. And, and it's not, it, and if, if you think about it, right, it, it's it's not the, the price, even though they much higher price, no, nobody argues, but if they go with this uh, uh, not, not Jewish, like organic stock for like all of the, for, for crazy people. So I would say they, it's, it's a, they, their organic stuff is more than our portion for sure. <clears throat> Okay, um, I have another, but I okay. for now it's enough, I think. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay, so regarding to, in regards to Shidduch, uh, uh, we were talking about at the, at the, at the beginning uh, of the class, mm -hmm. uh, till which point we must get deep into love during uh, 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 Shidduch, during the day. At, at, at which point? What? Say it again. I didn't hear. We 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 must get deep into love into love during the, the dating. Uh, because in love or falling in love with. Uh, yes, because I have a concept here. Uh, because in the past, or when you were young or teenager, we used to think in a date like, for example, the woman is she's like my hair to my soul and many more mm -hmm. things. We we look for that. Uh, Today it will be bordering human idol worship uh, for a human being, and so um, is it. The, the question is: Is it a biblical violation to fall in love with with our shidduch? No, 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 no. Okay, so let me uh, like start a little with you uh, from 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 the from uh, Humash, right? So it says uh, when Itzak met Rivka. So, and he said that uh, he married her and he loved her. So our sages like jump on this uh, line uh, right away. So they say, look, he first married her and then after some time he, he fall in love. So with our Shidduch, when we go to the Shidduch, so we don't, we're not uh, Itzhak Savino, as we know, right? We're a little lower level, right? But, uh, but, but uh, it should be some kind of a physical attraction, a must. Physical attraction is a, a must be, right? And then that, that's why we, we write uh, all the resumes. And um, so in this resume, you have time, right? You, you don't have to decide uh, anything on a, on a spot. So you say, I want this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And uh, in my dreams, right? In my like uh, perfect uh, marriage life, I, I, I see myself and doing this and this and my wife with this and they have seven children, 10 children, one child, seven dogs, whatever. So that's that's what I want. 
So you understand when when you come to this uh, to, to this uh, shiduch when she sees your resume, you you saw her resume, and uh, and you see okay, uh, I'm out of ten points that she wants. Okay, with uh, three points I can work. Right? Maybe it's not my best desire, but I can work on. So ba basically, where you you you're trying to see if you, it's like if this uh, like team in some sense, right? If it's going to work. So love is going to come. Most likely, like uh, the, the love develops because uh, people, they, they, when they get married, they're going together through, through so many things and now they close and they, they know what the love is. Right? This 19, uh, 20 years old, what do they know about the love? What do they don't know about life? They know zero. You understand? So, so, ex so of course, they have an unrealistic expectation. And club was so when you connect it on a soul level, it does not matter you're 20 or you're 40 or you're 50 or you're 70, the souls are the same. You understand? The souls, uh, the soul connection is only getting stronger. But love, even meaning as a physical attraction, it changes. Okay, she was 23, now she had one child and the two, two child, children, and she gained weight. And now that's uh, she is not sized or whatever, she's uh, five sizes more. And uh, she has to change her, her wardrobe and she does not look exactly as in a marriage picture. So in this case, where this love, this physical attraction, it breaks. You understand? That's why we go on a soul level. That when that does not break, doesn't matter how she looks. After, after a few children, especially. Um, I, I have another context for this. Taking into account uh, the Shema, because in the Shema it say, uh, we must love Hashem with our entire souls and entire hearts. Uh, and what about what if we love our Shiduk? Now is our wife very much in the stream that we are not going to give us one hundred percent love to Hashem. Uh, so what? I, I, I didn't. I didn't get the. The question so you were saying so now it's a uh, now it's competition between your your uh, spouse and Hashem yes kind of that because uh, mm -hmm. how how we avoid that this love between uh, the wife and the husband mm -hmm. might interfere with love of Hashem I mean uh, if you, you see uh, <clears throat> we, we cannot see this in independently so your your loving your wife is serving Hashem. It's not like uh, uh, it's her or Hashem. It's opposite. Like uh, whatever you do together, you live together is is, is a part of the service uh, servitude of Hashem. There is no contradiction. By loving her, you loving Hashem. He he said, uh, uh, get yourself uh, a wife and attach to your wife. You get off your uh, get away from your parents, and that's what exactly you do. So, and you, you do all of the mitzvahs together. So there is no, the, it, it should not be like, uh, it, it should not be any like uh, contradiction. There is no, like uh, you, you, you're doing, she's serving Hashem, you're serving to Hashem, and you together serving to Hashem. There is no, there, there, there is no contradiction. It, sh it should not be like uh, <clears throat> any competition. David, go ahead. Yes, Rev. I heard from Rabbi Solberg uh, about uh, the Chavetz time when his son died, right? He told the story. Uh, about this one woman during, I think it was the Crusades, uh, where, uh, what's it called, her child died, and now she said uh, she can put 100% of her, uh, you know, to Hashem. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, what's it called? I think they talk, uh, he's talking about the same here, too, where he's talking about uh, you won't have 100% uh, Kavana while damning, for example. Okay, so, I mean, uh, if, 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 to have 100% Kavana, like uh, somebody asked me, no, well, uh, let's let's say he's rather gonna you know want to schmooze with her instead. Of, he's gonna be more inclined to schmooze with her instead of uh, study. We'll say it that way. He's gonna you know spend one more hour, one an unnecessary hour schmoozing with her just because he wants to. Not but, uh, you see, you see to say that it's a necessary, not necessary. So it's it's all life. So it's uh, it, it, it it many many times we we have to be wise. Right, so and, and say maybe I'm going to sacrifice, sacrifice, right, one hour to my source of Hashem to talk to my wife, but in my mind, 
it's for uh, for for Hashem's sake, to 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 make our um, marriage bond stronger. So next time she said, "What are you doing here? Why, why are you not learning?" So she would yell at me that when I, I'm not learning. So you understand? Sometimes it's a, like many times a give and take. It's not like uh, like uh, there is a straight formula, but it but in your mind it, it like uh, it has to be straight, right? <laughs> Hashem come first before everybody. Right and uh, before wife, before children, before before even you yourself, Kashem comes first, and then uh, everything should fall in part. And uh, uh, but uh, don't tell them basically oh, yeah. that they are not first. Tell, tell them that they're, they're first, but uh, but you know that it's not sure. <laughs> Kashem is number one. What's it called? Uh, last question is: How does one know when he needs to take a break and when he should you know push himself? <laughs> Think uh, the, uh, I mean in in general in general. So we, we have this halacha. So if a doctor said uh, you no no you you good you're not sick, and person said no I'm very sick. So we we, we trust uh, that this uh, what is it, the, this uh, patient, even though the, the doctor is an expert in the field, said there is no no not the problem with you. Said no I'm very sick. So we trust the. The, 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 the patient. And if patient said, no, I need this medicine, I need this medicine, doctor said, you do not need this medicine, so we, we go by, by, the, uh, by, by the patient also. Because like inside, inside of him, he feels well, well, what he needs. Even from outside, it's not visible, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we connect that? So uh, every person, you, you must uh, meet yourself. So the problem is many people and uh, Baruch Hashem, I, I got a compliment from one person. So this person said, uh, I, I was blown away, right? I was blown away, but I have to tell him. After 35 years, this person, after 35 years, I introduced him to him. This person never talked to himself. He, he did not, he was always like running around like uh, from, from himself with all of the issues, all of that, have a problem, life pressures. Or, and he was uh, not uh, like able to, to talk to himself, to, to, to get to know himself. You understand? So all of these mistakes, the way I explained to the person, not, not all, I'm not an expert, but uh, many mista mistakes that he, this person was doing in his life because he did not know himself. Doesn't matter, it's, it sounds uh, funny, ridiculous, but but he he thanked thank me today, so now it's a different person. Like he thinks differently. So you, you must know yourself. Yeah, but what's it called? I, I know that I always want to you know sleep past chakras for two hours. So uh, you know, so even more so with studying, right? So how do we know the borderline when? No, but the, the, all the nature of laziness is natural. Yeah, it's absolutely natural. If you read the Mr. Lasser, he 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 uh, he repeats it many many times, a hundred times or whatever. So it's natural. So that's uh, that's why we, we must work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like an, another person who was talking to, to me, like if but the dude and I always uh, tired. Like I, I said, you normal. I said you 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 you, you down the show the whole shacharis and you have a uh, you have time for it, but the dude are you normal? And and then uh, it's it tend to be like he 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 downs like fifty minutes shacharis and he does uh, half an hour of the dude. Yeah, you understand? So so people need to know what to do. Like uh, we follow the shulchan aruch. I explain. So me personally, after I do shacharis. I don't want to do anything. Like even though it's a back of the signal, they will back uh, like uh, extra things that we say shakras. Me personally, I'm not on that level. I don't say it because I'm so tired after the whole uh, one hour and forty minutes. I'm I'm done basically. Maybe if you leave me alone, I, I will do. But um, but that that's the thing. You understand? So so person must know himself. So if he so if any extra, it, you you must know it's from Eitzahara. Why? Because you're going to break on 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 a ma mandatory things. So you do, you do mandatory things, and then if you if you have a koyach for extra, you do extra. But me personally, most of the time I do mandatory, and uh, that's it. That's uh, I mean, I'm telling you. Because what's it called? Uh, any avera someone does, for example, the Tanya. I know the Tanya says, and this is uh, Shari Chuba too. 
where uh, you can show an Avera, right? And not even let's, uh, okay, we'll go with an Avera. Uh, how if someone does an Avera, basically has no justification to live. Why? Because you were created to, to do mitzvahs and you're doing the exact opposite. So can't, you know, I could say the same about uh, a lot of small stuff because I'm not willing to put in the extra koyach. But uh, when do we say, okay, bare minimum, do good enough, and don't do, you know, bare minimum. Be like, you know, the guy who, uh, you know how someone davens too quick, right? Be like that in uh, day-to-day life, except, uh, let's say, Torah study. When do we say be good enough, and when do we say lechachila? Good, good enough, so, so we go by, by Shochanor. Shochanor says what's good enough. So if he says uh, we daven like we count money, so that's how we daven. We don't daven fast. So when, uh, and uh, don't, uh, so don't, uh, don't add extra. I think that that's the best example that I gave. So he said, I'm so tired from this, but they do that like I, I feel like uh, the whole energy is left. I'm like, what are you talking about? You normal, and then we, we, we figure out that he he does not down, period. I'm not sure what he does, but uh, in 15, 20 minutes, not not much basically. So you understand? So but but it's a hara is going to push you all of these projects. Oh, let's do this and let's do that, and you you you, you just push back. You push back. So no no no, I'm going by Shochanor. Mm-hmm. Because after 120 years, we're going to get judged by Shulchan Aruch. Like this, uh, uh, I, I, I don't even call him a younger person. I mean, uh, the, the person in his stories, right? So he asked me, like, I don't know, like five, six, seven years ago, about double trilling. He, he asked me, do, do you uh, wear double trilling? I mean, what is double trilling? I didn't know, like, what, what he was talking about. So, and then uh, they do research. So this Kabbalistic trilling, so, and they, they feed like, uh, they, they have enough room. So they, they're tiny. They, 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 uh, they, they, uh, they uh, feed in there. So the guy does not know how to wash her hands before the bread. You understand? Hopefully today he does, but like, like all the crazy things, crazy things that just wear one fill in. That's it, that's it, that's it. Don't do three, five, one is enough. Understood. So I wanted to give you two quotes uh, what's it called? One is a quote of the stipler, and then the other is actually what the stipler wrote. And then you tell me uh, what someone should do. Because he's talking about people who, let's say, wash their hands 20 times in the morning because they're not sure and so on, right? So uh, what's it called? This is quoted from uh, Rav Yisrael Gans. says that in cases that come before you regarding sufferers of religious compulsions, I think it is important to recall what the good old lady Israel, such as the stipler, uh, and Rav Shlomo Zalman said, and others uh, have opined in this matter, that in every case of doubt in the halacha, one is, mm-hmm. to, uh, one is to decide on the lenient side of the question. Mm-hmm. Even if it is unclear whether there is a doubt in the first place, mm-hmm. one is also to be lenient. Okay? Mm-hmm. So first of all, what do you say to that? No, but oh. of course, we're we talking it's, it's, it's this compulsion when they, when they have to do shma. And I, 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 I remember like some time ago, I was in a shul and they, they told me it's a slow down minute. I said, that's what I like is slow down minute. That's uh, I'm in the right place. And this guy uh, on my left, shma, shma, I said, <laughs> normal. And he was going like 10 times away. I was nervous. I, I was uh, looking and it was another guy like that. So the people are crazy. That's too much. Okay, maybe you didn't have the perfect kavana. Okay, you, you say later on with a better kavana, but don't, don't do seven times. Mm-hmm. You understand? Know that's too much. So in this case, we say one time, we go lenient, that's it. You have a perfect kavana, just stop it, continue, and then not stop it, continue reading. Don't, don't do all of these crazy things. But so, it's like uh, these people, like uh, they, they, uh, in their mind, if they say one time, it's not good. Mm-hmm. In ten ta- it, uh, second time, also not enough kavana. Why? Why would you do it? It'd be so crazy. Uh, so when a, pol- a person has compulsions, right? For example, let's say uh, what I might do sometimes is uh, let's say I were to say tawamata, right? Uh, then at the end of the year, you're not sure if you said tawamata or not. For example, this last month, right? You're not sure, and so on. Uh, then uh, you always have to. Let's say you feel like you have to repeat it all the time, so on and so forth. And obviously, you know, you, there's a very... Exactly, that exactly. So, so you, 
You have to know yourself. And uh, I, I would say, we put yourself a sticker there, like an uh, orange sticker, like a neon orange or a neon uh, green. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I, I do, I'm telling you what I do. I, I put my finger and I would not remove my finger and, and until I, I said what I, what I have to say. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it's very inconvenient to, to keep your finger like that in a sitter, but uh, I, that's my, my way. So I know for sure, for sure, I'm not going to remove my finger and, unless I, I said the right phrase. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, in, uh, always remember in Shmakalena, as we learn, Shmakalena, you can always uh, add this thing j just in case if you're not sure. So what's it called? In a case where, so basically a person with these compulsions and so on and so forth, right? And he feels like a normal person won't have this. So it's okay if he follows uh, the stipler's advice and such? Absolutely. He, he must. It's not okay. It's must to go the linear opinion. No, no, no. Not the linear. I apologize. It's not linear opinion. He, he, he did once. That's it. That's it. Continue with your life. Mm -hmm. don't, don't assume that you made a mistake. But uh, also, this this applies not only to that, as far as I know. But you're also saying, let's say, some isn't sure about a halacha, but it seems like such a far off question where nobody else would ask it, and it doesn't make any sense in the first place. Just he's worried. So in this case, too, you would say, no. If if it's easy 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 to check, so he he must check the halacha. But uh, we we're talking about during the downing. Did I say? Did not say? Who can I ask? There is nobody that you can ask. And that there is no way for, that, that you can remember. Mm -hmm. You understand? Or this schma, this guy, schma guy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And the second quote is that, uh, this is from a safer, it is forbidden to give reasons or explanations uh, to such a person. For e every reason that he is given, he will undermine to contradict and reject <laughs> completely whatever, whatever he was told. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I mean, uh, these people. It's, it's not about reasoning. It's not about he. He would say exactly opposite. Well, whatever you you you're going to give him ten reasons. He's going to give you ten answers why why he's uh, the worst person in, in the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's uh, there is no nobody to talk to him. So don't, don't give them the reason. That's, just say this is halach. Mm -hmm. Why? Because yeah. Because uh, I am. Uh, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to be a little stern with people. Okay. Anything else? Israel? Any? Good. Okay. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. All right. So nice uh, to see you guys. And until tomorrow, Bizrat Hashem, same time. Okay. Good night. Thank you very much.